Hate crimes are offences motivated by prejudice, uh, present against someone's uh, race or sexual orientation or transgender identity. But MPs are pondering whether other so-called protected characteristics should be included as well. Uh, last month it was announced uh, that a review by the Law Commission would look at whether offences uh, driven by uh, misogyny, the hatred of uh, women, should be treated as hate crimes. And in today's papers it's emerged the same review will also consider the opposite, crimes motivate, uh, motivated by misery the hatred towards men. You might as well suggest we do uh, misanthropic crimes, which are just ha hatred towards people, which is where I am, broadly. <laughs> uh, there was also, uh, uh, tucked in, in in the small print in some of these reports, uh, that uh, ageism and hatred of certain alternative cultures like goths and punks could also be included in the future as hate crimes. And I think we all remember the story of, I think it was Sophie Lancaster, the uh, goth woman uh, who was murdered by a teenager some 11 years ago. And I mention that because I know that her partner at the time felt that her, the reports of the death of her murder and the emphasis on the goth did her a great disservice. It was, a, it was yeah. a basically, it wasn't relevant. He didn't feel it was relevant. The number of hate crimes in England and Wales uh, last year was at a record high, more than 83,000 recorded. And I know from previous conversations with Kevin that one of the concerns he has over these hate crimes of, oh, what so and so wolf whistled at me, which Nottinghamshire police now record as a hate crime, well, in processing complaints by women of being wolf whistled, other more serious crimes may not get investigated. Where are you on hate crime, Kevin? I well, uh, I've had my experience with it. Uh, and uh, the thing is, in 1998, Tony Blair's government passed this legislation to outlaw hate speech or, or act against peace people based on racial, ethnic or religious prejudices. Uh, Gordon Brown in 2003 added sexual orientation and disability to the list. And now it seems we're kind of rolling it out to everyone. The problem with the hate crime laws is people go, oh, look at the, the, the hate crimes are rocketing. Look at the number of hate crimes there are now. Well, the way they record them is to say the least dodgy. It is if I see someone being nasty to a Polish builder on the street and I phone the police, and say I've just seen what I think is a hate crime, they'll go, oh, where was that? I'll go Stamford Street. And they say, well, do you know where they are? No, no, I don't know anything about that. They write it down. It becomes a hate crime. No one has been arrested. But you still witnessed hatred. Yeah, but that's, that's not that. Well, I could be lying. Couldn't I? You could. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a nonsensical way of recording this thing. And the other thing about hate crime that I uh, find very worrying is it actually is a way of closing down freedom of speech. It's making what we think illegal. And when Tony Blair changed the ball game in 1998, this was the first law in Britain against things you can, you might say. Mm -hmm. So we are now living in a world where things you say uh, will could turn you into a criminal. And wor the worst thing about hate crime laws is it's not what you think you did. It's what the alleged victim thinks you did. So if I have a row with a, a guy about a parking space, uh, and shall we say that guy is gay or, or, or uh, of eth ethnic origin, uh, and he goes to the police and says, actually, I think he was arguing with me because I'm black or because I'm gay, then I get arrested because it's all to do with his perception and nothing mm. to do with the reality. So th there are all sorts of problems with these hate crimes laws and I worry that politicians gather around them far too much. OK, well, let's talk now, if we can, uh, to Labour MP Stella Creasy, who I know uh, has been driving this within, within the House of Commons. Good afternoon, Stella. Hi, Matthew. Lovely talking to you. Um, do we need special hate crimes? Do we need to identify these when uh, many might argue we already have uh, laws, for example, laws of assault, uh, laws of abuse in present to deal with yeah. such allegations? So I'm sorry to hear what Kevin had to say, because I think he has completely misunderstood the nature of both hate crime and also how I hate think crime I do understand it, Stella. I, I've, I've experienced uh, it, really. Well, he had, he was, he was on the wrong you. end of a false accusation. So I think I, I've listened to you and I, I hope you would give me the respect. See, the point about hate crime is the basic respect that people have in life. Why should somebody live in fear because of who they are, because of their sexual orientation, because of their gender, because of their race or their religion? But sadly, we know that that happens. What, what, sorry, Stella, just, 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 on, sorry, doubt. sorry. Just, just well, let me just explain that okay. very clearly. No one's talking about any new offences. What we're talking about doing is recognising that where hostility towards somebody, because of a basic characteristic about who they are, hmm. has been a motivating factor in that crime, that should be acknowledged and addressed. 
because I'm sure none of us want to live in a world where for simply being black or for being gay or for being Muslim, you live in fear. I don't think that's the world any of us want to live in, even Kevin. But we, I agree but with we that. Do, <laughs> we do have existing laws, though, don't we? Absolutely, but what we don't have at the moment is any recognition that where that hate is uh, motivating people to do those things, that should be taken into account. We do have it on some forms of protected characteristics, as you said, so things like yeah. race or religion, yeah. but we don't treat those protections equally. So as a woman, I have protection in the workplace from being discriminated against, yes. but if I walk out on the streets, I don't have protection from being sexually harassed. And we know that half of all women experience that on a daily basis. We, we, and more crucially for all of us, women are changing their behaviour rather than those people who are doing it, stopping it. Okay, so well, women I, aren't just, going out at night. They're worried about what they wear. They're frightened. Can, can I just, can I just chip in at either. some point, Stella, and, and remind mm. you that actually uh, victims of violence, men are far more likely to be victims of violence than women, and that plenty of men, and I would add my name to the list, have at various mm -hmm. times in our lives felt uncomfortable about going out for fear of attack and violence. Now, I don't consider myself, and I have been beaten up several times in my life mm -hmm. for nothing other than walking around on the streets, whether it be for having long hair as it was back in the day or whatever. And mm -hmm. I wasn't the victim of a hate crime. I was a victim of a crime. And actually, my gender, my hairstyle, my colour, and my ability to move out and forward are really irrelevant. What I'm living in is a horrible world filled with horrible people. And, and that's, that's, I'm sorry to hear that that's happened to you, Matthew. But where there is somebody targeting women. So specifically, this came about because of the discussion around upskirting. Yeah. People thinking that they could take photos of a woman's genitals without their permission um, just because they, they had a camera and they had that power and that yeah. control to be able to do that. Where somebody is motivated through hating that person because they are a woman or hating somebody, uh, women who have their hijabs, for example, yeah. pulled off their heads. Do you recognise that recognising that in the law and saying, well, actually, that should have a tougher sentence than somebody who doesn't target people in that way. Should, it, should, it, have a tougher, should it have a tougher sentence mm -hmm. than a kid walking up behind an old bloke and flicking his cap on, on, on the floor? Well, so one of the things that this Law Crime Commission review is going to look at is whether ageism is... Again, we protect people in the workplace. I simply go back to, do you think that people should be protected in their workplace from discrimination and abuse in these ways? Because if you do, it doesn't really make any sense to say, but as soon as you walk out the door, you're on your own, which is yeah. what the law says at the moment. I just, so I just, all we're looking to do is have parity. It's not about creating any new form of uh, offence. It isn't about freedom of speech because it's no freedom of speech if 50% of conversation well, is living in fear because of the, the abuse and the, they're getting because of who they are. I was reading a police forum uh, where I'm mm. presuming officers, because without being able to uh, verify their identities, mm. I, I'm at sea. And uh, they were talking at length about uh, Nottinghamshire Constabulary's decision yeah. uh, to take wolf whistling and include that as a hate crime independently. And the view of these officers, uh, if indeed they were officers, was that this is an attempt to strict freedom of speech that actually some women uh, not only don't mind being wolf whistled at but positively enjoy it well let, let's break that down because the evidence that we've had from nottinghamshire is of the positive impact that both the police and local women have experienced in recognizing different forms it's not about any one behavior it's not about wolf whistling mm. it's about harassment look matthew have you ever met a couple who says we met because he followed me down the street in the car saying get in the back and i thought that was the most romantic proposition i've ever had we all know that somebody who harasses women that it's not evidence of their love and affection it's about control mm. and i have to say i'd be very worried about somebody who behaved in those ways and what they might go on to do the conversation about hate crime is about changing our focus rather than to what sort of behaviours women, uh, Muslims, uh, gay people should mm. have to put up with, to saying, actually, in a modern, free and equal society, you shouldn't do these things because you're trying I, to I, help oh, I, I, else's I, freedom. I understand. I, I have to be very careful with uh, what I'm going to say now because it is uh, mm. an active criminal case, but uh, or an active case. Graham Linehan, the uh, uh, father Ted writer, has had uh, some falling out uh, with a trans activist, which I believe has resulted in allegations of hate speech. Now, Mm -hmm. Without discussing the case, one might argue that what those two are arguing about, I believe, is allegations of dead naming, referring to people's previous names after they've changed mm -hmm. them. Now, before it's tested in court, I, I, I'm reluctant to go too far with it, but it does seem that uh, hate speech over trying to work out who somebody actually is in, in a row over various people saying various things about one another. I mean, this surely isn't the spirit by which 
uh, any kind of hate legislation should be practicing. We should be looking at proper examples, shouldn't we, rather than sort of he said, well, she said. Yeah. This is why we have courts, because it's not for you or I to decide what is a yeah. proper example, is it? It's not for you or I to decide whether somebody has been harassed. It's for the courts of law to apply the laws that we have. Well, first of all, I have to decide whether I go to the right police, now. Stella. I have to decide whether I go to the police. Right. And many people feel that if if uh, if uh, flimsy claims of hate speech are taken to the police, precious hours of precious police time are wasted pursuing no-hope cases or trivial cases. And I think that is a very serious concern. So I'm looking at the two-thirds of young women in this country who say they don't go out because they're frightened about being harassed in the street. I'm looking at the thousands of Muslims in our country who come forward frightened about the abuse they get because people... Are, are you looking at the number of people like whose cases them? don't get investigated and by saying, the police, Stella? Absolutely, but, but I think we're also recognising that hate crime isn't recorded so for us to know and understand where it's taking place and what we can do about it. The reason why we're having this review now, and I would encourage everyone to contribute to it, is to recognise that the laws don't work as they stand at the moment. The laws don't actually give people the parity of protection. Like you say, there are different protected characteristics, and we might need to have new legislation to recognise that hostility. Okay. I simply say to you and, and Kevin, hear out those voices of the women who have for too long been told that a wolf whistle is a sign of affection. And hear out those voices of those of males, because you don't mention much about male victims, and, and I do appreciate there are, that you have your reasons. Well, but that's because I'm, I'm going I, on... I, no, no, look, Matthew, what are my reasons? What, why are you prejudging what my reasons are? Uh, you want misogyny to be recognised in the same way as racial or religious hatred because of the high levels of harassment that girls and women suffer. That is the quote that I've carried I in. Want the into here. What I act. wanted to I concentrate want on was, was everybody, the Stella, that we have in everyone, men and but, women, but the you, boys you that are frightened, the then, boys and men that are abused. I want them all do, dealt with. Do, do, do you support the Equalities Act? I do support the Equalities Act. I'm not, not, not okay, sure so if it's that, properly that interpreted. Some, well, because it separates on some particular protected characteristics because we recognise we don't live in an equal society where particular groups are targeted, are held back, are discriminated against. And all we're saying is that shouldn't only happen in the workplace that you get Absolutely. that protection. I've, I've, Surely you should have... Right, so if you agree with that then, Matthew, then contribute to the Law Commission review. Okay. And all all I was pointing out, Stella, all I was pointing out was the paucity of mentions of male concerns in your address. Stella Creasy, I've got to go because it's time for the news, but it was lovely speaking to you and you know I'm right behind you.